Well, despite the pandemic, the Burbot Bash is going forward. Hey, I'm Adam Eakle, and thanks for tuning in to KSL Outdoors. My good buddy, Ryan Mosley, pretty excited about this year's Burbot Bash. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good event. We got a format established, you know, that hopefully keep everybody safe. And um, yeah, we'll just see what happens. I'm excited. Hey, we came out today to try and catch some Lakers, some rainbows, and maybe even some Burbot. Let's, uh, we got a good crew out here today. We do. We got a bunch of good anglers. Uh, you know, when you got a bunch of good sticks like this on the water, I'm sure somebody will figure something out. All right, let's do it. Should be about eight inches, maybe nine. Good pick, guys. Flaming Gorge is notorious for freezing in stages. You might have eight solid inches like we do today, but just down lake, it could be less than four inches. The gorge is no place to go it alone, and you definitely want your safety gear with you. Every year, it seems like someone falls through the ice. Got him. Swim, swim. That one was up at 20, 30 feet, so that's why it's always nice to have a fish finder. Because you're fishing on the bottom, and then you see something come up high, you just never know. You can get Lakers up shallow as well. It's just a tikka minnow made by clam. Tipped a little bit of sculpin. We'll see how many Lakers we can get, and then maybe we'll target some rainbows and cuts later. And you never know, too, we could get some burbot, you know, during the day as well. I picked up a big one last week just doing the same thing, so. We do have a study going on right now with lake trout where we're trying to see what different size classes of lake trout are eating. Another one? Dang. Up at 30. And we just need a, a better understanding of what the lake trout are eating now. Yeah, it was just up at 30. In this different dynamic um, that the gorge has going on. Since the burbot invasion and how that's all changed things and crayfish and all of our sport fish, the kokanee that, you know, a lot of people travel a great distance to come here and fish for. You know, how are the lake trout coming into that equation? You know, are they consuming kokanee different times of the year? Is there a particular size of lake trout that's really consuming kokanee? What size do they switch over to primarily eating kokanee? These are all the things that we really want to learn. And also, if we can, you know, just how many lake trout do we have out here for people to catch? Dang, Mosley! So I'm going to try the same thing that Ryan's got. It's that Tika Minnow. Uh, I think it's 5 16th ounce. Little, I've got a little different. I've got a little piece of chub meat on it. And then I've got this Dave Gantz split handle from Clam. Going to try this rod out. First time having it on the ice. Pretty excited. Ryan really likes it. It's got some uh, stiff backbone to set the hook in these Lakers and these Burbot. And, but flexible uh, on the top there and the tip that you can actually see the hit. So I saw a fish down there. I've got one down there at 36. Let's go down to him, see if he... See if he's interested. Rainbow? Rainbow. It's up at 10 feet. It's a rainbow. Nice rainbow. Fat, healthy fish. Ryan is just tearing it up. The rest of us? Oh. Nice leg trout. Come off. Right at the hole. Loser. <laughs> Can't seem to catch a break, let alone a fish. Oh, missed him. Missed him. Oh. No! Oh, he's going deeper. He hit it good, too. I just didn't get, a, just didn't get him stuck. Oh, and it came off. Nice, huh? I don't have to touch it, Jared. <laughs> Another shallow fish, so it was up at 30 feet. It seemed to be the ones that were willing to hit anyway. Fish on. Tony's on. Imagine that, a big cutthroat rod over 20 inches. So that's a pretty cutthroat right there. Beautiful fish. Solid. What depth was he at, Tony? He just was coming through at about 20. I just drilled up to him. Nice. Pretty fish. And what strain of cutthroat is this? It's a Bear River strain. Yeah. Looks like they're doing pretty good. Yeah, they come out of Wyoming. Uh, they're raised at Jones Hole National Fish Hatchery and stocked into the gorge. So. God, he's beautiful. Yeah. A couple of those today. Super solid fish. Yeah, they're doing really well in the gorge. Cool. And I think anglers really like them. You know, it's just another species of opportunity. So. Whoa. Um, yeah, I didn't really like that. No, that scared me. <laughs> it's thick guys, but it ain't that thick. Yeah. Yeah, that's a nicer one. Good fish here. Finally, some pups. Rob's just jealous because he can't catch fish. Don't lose him! Don't lose him! There you go! 
Finally! This is what we're trying to get out of here is a size, especially, and this is a spectacular eating fish too, so why not come take advantage of these high possession limits and, I mean, they're beautiful fish. It's been a long morning. At least it's bigger than Mosley's fish. Yeah, but Ryan's definitely had the numbers. Jeez! Not even paying attention, he's catching fish. What is that, like six? The limit of lake trout is 12 at Flaming Gorge with one fish over 28 inches. Biologists in both Utah and Wyoming have been encouraging anglers Another one out of the lake. to keep smaller lake trout to help thin the overabundant population of small lake trout. They believe these small lakers are having a negative impact on the kokanee population. So when you come out, keep your limit of lakers. A little tube jig. Little laker. Skunk is off! I still stink, but the skunk is off. Little laker, but he ate her good. It's kind of a sand tube jig with some fleck in it. And remember when you bait these, these guys have always taught me to just use a little teeny piece of cup bait. Don't get too excited and put a big chunk on there. Just need a little bit in, on there to entice them. Tube jigs, jigging spoons, and this Tika minnow from clam that Ryan is catching them on is all working today. I couldn't buy a fish on the Tika minnow. Turns out my jigging motion was wrong. Ryan showed me to jerk the minnow with about a 10 to 12 inch motion, and soon I too was catching fish. There he is. That action worked, Ryan. That little lesson you gave me, that helped. What do we got? Another little laker. A little better. Come on, come on. There you go. Buckboard Marina is holding their second annual population contest that we've told you about a few times this past year. 100 small lake trout have been tagged and if caught are worth money, prizes, and a chance at their grand prize, one of which is a new boat. So if you plan on coming up for the Burbot Bash in three weeks, you should sign up for the population contest as well. You can sign up for the population contest at buckboardmarina.net. Nice! That was awesome. Shot up off the bottom and slammed it. He actually feels pretty good. He feels bigger than any of the others I've had. You caught that one on the Tika Minnow again? Tika Minnow. That's my third one. On the oh, I see. Big, big, big. He's burping. It's a good one. Swim. 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 Nice. Boy, don't forget when you come out here for this year's Burbot Bash, you know, there's about 100 and I don't know, 75 tagged small lake trout up here. The uh, population contest is on. It goes clear to June 14th. Get up here during the Burbot Bash in the evening, but man, in the afternoon and mornings, I'd be out here looking for some of these lake trout, hoping that one of them might have a tag because they're giving away some great prizes, all from our friends over at Buckboard Marina. Rod! There he is. Be a burbot. Whoa, it's a monster. It's a, it's a monster burb. <laughs> you know, burbot is another species to target here at Flaming Gorge. There it is, first burbot of the night. Not quite a master angler, but we'll keep them anyway. <laughs> burbot are invasive. There's no limit, and if caught, they must be killed. The annual burbot bash is set to kick off January 29th and will run for three days. This annual fishing contest has been a really productive way for anglers to help the fishery out by targeting these eel-like fish. This year, because of the pandemic, there are a few changes, but the bash is still on. Yeah, we're changing it up a little bit just to keep it safe for everybody, obviously. We're gonna run multiple check-in stations each day, registrations online, the awards are gonna be issued online, and then they'll mail out the awards to the lucky participants. But yeah, it's all just in hopes that we can hold the event and then keep it safer all the people that are participating. To register a team, go to bourbonbash.com. Now you'll need to register prior to January 24th. There will be no on-site registration for the event. So how do you catch bourbon? Here's Ryan with a few pointers. A lot of people are gonna go to the most accessible locations. So my first recommendation is to, to branch out away from the crowds. You're targeting your own fish, you're not sharing fish with other groups or other teams. The second thing is to look at habitat. Rocky habitat like we have here behind us is prime habitat. And once you find that rocky habitat, target depths, you know, anywhere from 10 to 40 feet. 
and once it gets dark, you know, the game is on. So when I go out on the ice, I'm drilling holes well before sunset to be prepared so I'm not making a bunch of noise. And once the witching hour starts, you know, I can just start catching fish. And the third thing? Uh, I would probably say glow in the dark. You know, that's gonna be key right there is glow in the dark and bait, you know, some type of bait on it, whether it's chub meat, sucker meat, and then put the bait close to the bottom. Not on the bottom, but just probably just a couple inches or a few inches off the bottom. You can use six rods in Utah or Wyoming through the ice. And when you do, you just need to make sure you have your name on your pole. So that way, if a law enforcement officer walks out, they can tell whose poles are whose. Okay. Um, one thing that I do that's pretty simple for me is I get all these uh, mailing labels. <laughs> right, those are this the is, everybody says. This is Ducks Unlimited right here. It's got my name and address on there. They just pinch on real easy if they tear off or they get wet and fall off. It's real easy to just throw another one on. It could be a fantastic year for people to come out and social distance out on the ice. Right. And, and the, the thing that they need to remember, if you're going to put a team together, you've got to meet that January 24th deadline. Yep, all the registration online this year. Register for the population contest. Tony, they can do it on your website? Yep, to our website till I think March 31st. The contest runs till June 13th. June 13th, the, the population. population control. Yeah. yeah, it's a long time. Hey, get up here for the Burbot Bash. Uh, sign up for the population contest. It's a good time up here with family, friends, and you just never know. That one fish could be worth some big prizes, some big cash. I'm Adam Eagle, KSL Outdoors. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.